Hi everyone, my name is Aishwarya Sudeep. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Enterprise Networking and Cloud Routing Group at Cisco. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about MacSec with the best-in-class enterprise modular access WAN platforms like the Cisco Catalyst 8300 and 8200 series edge platforms. In today's session, we will be covering an overview on MacSec features, platform-specific MacSec support, some tested MacSec scale on the interfaces, and wrap it up with a short demo along with some important reference URLs and other relevant information. First, let's get started with an overview on the most widely deployed feature, MacSec. So what is MacSec? Media Access Control Security is the IEEE 802.1AE standard for authenticating and encrypting packets between two MacSec capable devices at layer two. The Catalyst 8000 series platforms support 802.1AE encryption with MacSec key agreement, on-shot MKA, on switch to host links, router to router links, and router to switch links for encryption between them. It provides confidentiality and integrity of data in transit, including well-known protocols such as spanning tree protocol, CDP, OSPF, and so on. So how does that work? The authentication happens using 802.1x EAP TLS or pre-shared key framework. MACSEC key agreement or MKA provides required session keys and manages required encryption keys to ensure that the data has integrity and confidentiality. So why use MACSEC as a solution? MACSEC is capable of identifying and preventing most security threats, including spoofing, tampering, replaying, hence minimizing impact on the network. Next, let's talk about MacSec capabilities with Cisco's new Catalyst 8300 series edge platform using the MacSec supported WAN module to understand what are the interfaces and modules that are supported here. MacSec is supported on the onboard SFP plus interface on the higher end models, which is the C8300 2N2S42X. These interfaces support 1G or 10G MACSEC. MACSEC is supported on the WAN module interfaces on CNIM 1X and CNIM 2T, which comes in the NIM form factor. It is important to know that MACSEC throughput is independent of IPSEC throughput, as IPSEC is limited using DNA BW tire, while MACSEC is unthrottled and can achieve platform line rate throughput. So to enable MACSEC, HSEC license is a prerequisite. MacSec feature is supported on the lowest DNA subscription, which is DNA Essentials. Now let's discuss the WAN MacSec on C8300. The 256-bit WAN MacSec is supported on these modules, CNIM 1X, SFP Plus module, and CNIM 2T, copper or SFP module as illustrated here. The CNIM 1X support 1G and 10G WAN MACSEC with line rate performance, and the CNIM 2T supports 1G WAN MACSEC with line rate performance. The LAN MACSEC is also supported on the C8300 platforms using the next gen switch modules, which come in 22 and 50 port variants, as illustrated here. All LAN facing ports support 128 or 256 bit LAN MACSEC and can be connected to end host and switches in customer LAN infrastructure. To have full functional MACSEC, both end of the links should be MACSEC capable. Moving on to the Catalyst 8200 series edge platform, it supports only 256 bit WAN MACSEC. For customers who want to deploy MacSec on C8200 or C8200L series platforms, it is necessary to have C NIM 2T module, copper or SFP module on the NIM slot as illustrated here. This supports 1G MacSec with line rate performance. Now, turning to MacSec scaling, it is important to understand how many MACSEC peers we can scale on the interfaces supported on the C8300 and C8200 series platforms. With 1G interface, the platforms can scale up to 8 peers. With 10G interface, it can go up to 32 peers. Both channels with multiple links can scale even more based on the customer needs or use multiple interfaces with .1Q VLAN tagging. 
Next, we're going to go through a demonstration of a successful MaxSec peering between the C8300 and the C8200 platforms using the CNIM2T module. Before we go ahead with the demo, let's go over the topology. Here we have the C8300 on site 2 with CNIM2T module which supports WAN 256-bit MaxSec. In site 1, we have the C8200 platform with the same module. This module has two copper and two SFP ports and the copper ports on this module are used for physical interconnection. From the demo, you will see a successful MaxSec peering and an overlay tunnel established between these two platforms over a physical WAN underlay with all the traffic being encrypted. Here I have the C8200 and the C8300 terminals open. Show platform command on the C8200 displays the chassis type as C8200 1N4T and the hardware type as CNEM2T for the 0 slash 1 chassis slot which is operational. The interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 slash 0 is up with an IP 100.100.100.2 that's connected to the C8300. Let's check the same on the C8300. The chassis type displays as C8300 2N 2S 60 and the hardware type as CNIM2T for 0 slash 2 chassis slot. The interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2 slash 0 is up with an IP 100.100.100.1 that's connected to the 8200. Both C8200 that's site 1 and C8300 that's site 2 are running on an iOS version 1708.01a. Moving back to site 1, here I have the MK policy already created called test and I've chosen to configure the cipher suite as GCM AES 256. Moving to the MaxSec MKA using PSK config, we have a keychain name defined with a unique identifier for each key in the keychain as 01 and the cryptographic algorithm set with 128-bit encryption and the password for the key string in hexa. And the same has been configured on site 2. In order to check the connectivity, site 1 and site 2 are going to ping each other, which is successful. Now let's move on to configuring MaxSec MKA on the site 1 interface using PSK. Once you enable MaxSec on the interface, it self adjusts the IP MTU to 1468. As discussed previously, to enable MaxSec, HSEC license is a prerequisite which is here in use. The same MaxSec MKA configuration is done on the Site2's interface. The HSEC license is used here too. Now we have all the configurations complete on both the ends with their respective MKA policies assigned to the right interface. To verify the MaxSec state on site 1, we use the command show MaxSec summary. Here the secure channel flag is set and the interface has MaxSec enabled. With MaxSec implemented, the show MaxSec statistics interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 slash 0 on site 1 displays the security entity stats like ingress and egress encrypted octets. Next, the command show MKA session displays the active MaxSec key agreement protocol session with the policy name test and the keychain identifier 01 which we had configured before. The last verification step on site 1 is using the command show MKA policy which displays the MKA policy test, the cipher, the interface it is applied on. Heading to site 2 which is the CE8300 the same verification steps are going to be followed. The show MaxSec summary command displays the secure channel flag as set and the assigned interface as MaxSec enabled. The show MaxSec statistics interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2 slash 0 on site 2 displays the security entity stats like ingression and egression encryption octates. Next, the command show MKA session displays the active MaxSec key agreement protocol session, which displays the policy name as test, the keychain identifier as 01 that we had configured earlier for site 2. The last verification step for site 2 is show MKA policy, which displays the MKA policy test, the cipher, and the interface it is applied on. 
As seen in the default policy, we have another cipher supported that is GCM AES128. After all the MacSec configurations, we're going to check our connectivity by pinging C8300, that's site 2, from C8200, that's site 1. So here you have a successful MacSec peering and an overlay tunnel established between the two platforms. Before concluding this session, here are some important references. So here is the MacSec and MKA configuration guide and 8021AE MacSec white paper link. This is going to help you understand the best practices, solution, and design. So here are the iOS XE code recommendations for the C8300 and C8200 platforms. While here are the supported cipher suites supported with the MacSec on both 1G and 10G interfaces. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.